works hard to make everyone feel welcome, and her contributions to leadership in the order system uh, take her gratitude for her school and her community to another level. I admission to gratitude in East Place Temperance and her devotion to her studies, her habitual putting the needs of others before herself, uh, and her prudence shines through also uh, every day in the classroom and the way that she interacts with her peers. I need to stand out for character as well as her support, and I'm glad that uh, she can be recognized with this capstone award. Thank you, Dr. Kennedy. Congratulations, Ian. All right, we have a Howe uh, High School uh, Tax on the Lord winner as well. Thank you for presenting that. Mrs. Garland and Mrs. McAllister.
Institute's American Leaders Council. Please welcome Mr. Miles Walter. Well, thank you guys. I'm excited to be here. It's a good energy in the room. Real quick, I want to know which of you guys would have eaten the marshmallow right away. Yeah. Okay, who would have eaten it? Now, where are my gratitude cabins? Gratitude cabins, where are you? Here's what I was thinking. I didn't see a single one of those little jerks say thank you for the first marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to talk a little bit more about that, but that is not my, my subject today. So we're going to talk about temperance. And as I try to think how I could tailor this speech to be relevant to all of you guys, I started to do some research and found it to be a little bit challenging. My hope was I could just Google temperance and find some really good examples. Uh, but it turns out that temperance isn't something people are very good at these days. In fact, they're not even practicing it at all. In fact, it appears mostly that we as a culture have drifted away from tempering any of our want to ambition or pleasure. This is concerning. Before I get too much further into our subject today, let me back up, back up a little bit, perhaps tell you why I think I was invited to come here today, and maybe give you some tips on what you might be able to take away. So I work in the NFL for the Denver Broncos. It's a pretty awesome job. A lot of you guys, I hope you're Broncos fans, maybe you're not. But some of you might be thinking, I want to have a cool job when I grow up, and maybe professional sports uh, could be a good career path. And you may also think that sports are just stupid and you want to do something else, and that's completely fine, and fine too. But whatever your career is, you might want to think, what is the next step? And so I hope today I can share a little bit of my story, how I got to work for the Broncos, and tell you why the virtue of temperance should be top of mind of you. Is everyone all right with that? Can I have some fun? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to tell you how I got to where I was. A sophomore in college at Hillsdale College, 19, probably not much older than a lot of you guys, and I had an older sister who was living in New York City. And I had never been there before. She was uh, she was working for some newspaper as a journalist, and I just wanted to come out, see all the tall buildings, the shiny lights, check out a couple museums, and, and just have some fun. And my sister says to me, she goes, "Well, oh, Matt, I can't wait to see you." What meetings do you have set up? I'm thinking, what? But what, what meetings do I have set up? I don't know. I'm just coming to check out Central Park. And, uh, you know, who the heck am I going to meet with? New York's got 8 million people in it. You know how many people I knew there? One. My sister. So I don't know how I'm going to set this meeting. I'm a little annoyed. I didn't have much money at the time. You know, I'm trying to figure out you know, how to, to best do that and just have fun. She wants me to set this meeting. Little did I know she was teaching me a little lesson on temperance. So I calm down a little bit and say, all right, Jillian, who do you want me to meet with? And she says, well, Matt, uh, Major League Baseball is headquarters are here. At the time, I really wanted to work in baseball. And so she said, why don't you look up one of the guys over there and give him a call. Just, you know, find out how he got there, figure out what he does, look at the steps he took. So I do a quick Google search, and I find out the president of Major League Baseball Advanced Media is a guy named Bob, Bob Bowman. So I look at the, the number and I call it, and somebody answers the phone, they say, Major League Baseball, how can I help you? So I say, uh, hi, I'd like to speak to Bob Bowman, and they just transfer me. I get a voice from So I say, hi, Mr. Bowman, my name's Matt, I'm going to be in New York City. I got some free time, I'd love to meet with you. Um, and I didn't get a call back, surprisingly. Uh, I was kind of a little annoyed, so I call again. Same thing, I get a voice note, say, hey, uh, Mr. Bowman, it's Matt, I told you I'm going to be in New York, I really want to meet with you. Nothing. So I call again. I call again, finally I get his assistant. His assistant answers, say, hey, it's Matt. I've been calling, I've been emailing. She goes, oh, Matt, you got your message. Uh, Mr. Bowman's pretty busy. Well, why don't you send us an email and we'll see what we can do. So I send this, this email and again, I'm, I'm trying to reach out to the head of Major League Baseball, just as this 19 year old kid. So I send one more note and bam, I get the meeting. So I'm kind of excited. Fast forward a couple of weeks, I'm in New York City and I, I go up and I'm dressed in this suit that doesn't really fit right. I look just like a loser. I mean, it was obvious I borrowed one of my dad's ties. But I'm excited. I have the right attitude because I might be able to learn something. By the way, I was saving some 
says, Matt, I'm happy to meet with you, but do you know how many calls, emails I get from young people saying, hey, I think baseball's cool, I want to meet with you. So I start off and go, I don't know, probably a thousand times, I'm sorry, Mr. Bowman. And he cuts me off again. And he says, no, Matt, none. I don't get any emails. No calls. Nobody's asking me what to do. Isn't that kind of weird? Because I, I'm, I'm the best in baseball. I've run this whole business. And no one's asking me how, how I got there. You'd think, right, if, if you want to get somewhere and someone's done that, they might ask them how they did it. Does that make sense, right? So he tells me he's a busy, busy man, but he, he said, you know what, Matt, I was willing to meet with you because you were pleasantly persistent, and I can tell you were authentic and that you wanted to learn. And uh, he, he mentioned that during his career, he had a lot of people that helped him out. A lot of people gave him advice, and they were successful. And there was no way that he could, he could thank them. And there's no way I could thank Mr. Bowman in a way that was appropriate. What am I going to do, take him out to a dinner? Taco Bell, that was a call I could afford it. He doesn't need that. Uh, but the way that, you know, obviously I said him a, a great thing, you know, don't worry. But um, he, he wanted to repay that for it. So I want to encourage you to, to go out there and, and find someone in your career and, and ask him. So I restrained and delayed my, my fun in New York to try and attain that which I thought was honorable. And, and in this case, it was my career or my next step. The meeting was great, he gave me some, some awesome some tips and kind of told me where to go and that led to my first job in baseball. And then I kind of used that mentorship and asking for help to eventually get into the NFL. Um, and it's, it's been great, but I've, I've had this success because I've practiced this moderation and I've, I've asked for help uh, along the way. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't want to work in professional sports, but that's completely fine. But there is someone in your career field that's already doing that. If you want to be in the military, there's someone in the military you can ask. If you want to be a veterinarian, there's someone who's doing that. If you want to be a teacher, talk to your teachers. It, it doesn't matter. You need to start asking how to get there. And if you don't know, start talking to your teachers that are here. They're here to help and, and find out what makes you unique in your skill set that will help you get to that next step in, in your career. So now you get asked, well, where, where is the temperance coming? So let's start with how it's defined in curriculum, as the restraint and passions of ambition and pleasure, temperance places intellect, balance, and reason above impulsiveness, setting limits in order to attain that which is honorable. And again, for the sake of today's topic, what is honorable is going to be your next step, your career, your success, your college, whatever that is. And there's one thing I already know about everybody in this room, is you're extremely intelligent. I mean, your, your test scores are great. I, I had this tour that was awesome. There, there's something special here. And you guys are, are have an experience that is different. But that does not mean you're going to make it. It's, it's pretty easy to think that you've got this great education, your, your friends are, are successful, you know the test scores, but that, that doesn't mean it's just going to happen and you're going to be successful. You're going to have to create opportunities, and you're going to have to talk to people, and you're going to have to learn, and that means you're going to not have fun all the time, and you're going to have to, you're going to, have to work hard, and you're going to have to be intentional about the next couple of years of your life, whether you're in seventh grade or a junior or senior, moving up. You're already getting ahead by this education, but let's keep you there. You're going to have to show some restraint, and you're not going to, you can't act like a VDI. You guys know what a BDI is? Anybody? A big dumb idiot. <laughs> That's all that is. Huh? We just got to stay on the right, right track. So, uh, a lot of you guys are probably thinking, here it goes. You're going to get lectured about what not to do. Uh, you know, the definition of temperance is resistance from the, the passions and the pleasures. Uh, and I am going to tell you, don't do drugs. That, that's true. But there are several other things I want you to consider over the next few years of your life that might be good applications of this difference. Now, I want to start with social media. Social media can be awesome. It's a lot of fun. It's a great tool for information, for marketing, for fun. You guys buy on Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. I got them all too. And you're probably hoping that people are watching you. And they are. They absolutely are watching you. So you've got to be careful what you post and what you're following. And ask yourself if the content you're consuming, the people you follow, what you're scrolling on, is 
virtuous, wholesome, or if it's destructive and bad. And I, I said bad, I, I have a thesaurus, I could have figured out a, a better word for that. But bad, every single one of you guys in this room knows what bad is. Just avoid it, you don't need to be doing that. Aspire to be leaders and set limits on your con consumption. I challenge you guys to be intentional about the time that you're spending on social media and what you're watching. And by the way, it's not what everybody else is doing. If you guys leave and go to your neighborhoods and are hanging out with your friends that aren't in this school, you're going to notice that they're scrolling at quite a few more hours than you guys are. Let them do it. Get ahead. I'll make it simple. Simple. Be better than them. Spend less time. Spend more time learning, working, and helping those around you. Second, I'm going to go back to that don't do drugs thing, even though I know we're not doing that. But in Colorado here, as you guys probably know, marijuana is legal, right? And pretty soon all of you guys are going to have the opportunity to smoke weed, marijuana if you want to, because it's legal. And I want you to remember something. Legal does not make it legitimate. I'm going to repeat that. Legal does not make it legitimate. There's a lot of things that are perfectly okay to do that are legal. You know, when you get to a certain age, you can drink, you can gamble, you can be mean to people, you can do whatever. It's all legal, but that doesn't mean it's legitimate. And if you set limits on what you decide to engage in, it will directly affect your ability to attain that which is honorable. So remember that. Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's legitimate. Don't do it. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on your goals. I promise you'll have plenty of opportunities to have fun and engage in things, but I want you to take a moment before, before doing those and think which legal things could be detrimental and which things could help you get ahead in the next couple of years of your life. Your career options are limitless right now. You can do whatever you want, but if you don't practice temperance, become a slave to your own desires, you will severely limit your opportunities. Men and women of substance, of quality, of power, of persuasion, people who have gifts to give the world, those who are full in mind, body, and spirit, are temperate people. Temperate people will be successful. I told you at the beginning, temperance is not something people in our culture are very good at, good at these days, whether it's celebrities, whether it's your friends. They encourage you to do whatever makes you happy without any thought of future security or advancement. They'll tell you you're unique, you're different, and no one knows what to do or, or what you do or how to define your happiness. And you probably heard the expression YOLO. That's right. You only live once. And I think you guys should absolutely pursue happiness. But I want you to think about what is going to get you long-term happiness. What does that mean in the future? Maybe it's a cool job, maybe it's a family, nice things, it doesn't matter. But human nature doesn't change, and it's going to tempt you to indulge in a lot of things. But if you can keep your eye on the prize and resist, you will get ahead and have the best chance at attaining that which is honorable. I'll leave you with this. If you desire to live a virtuous life, surround yourself with good people and be intentional. The best way to practice temperance might be to just avoid those situations entirely. And if you're with, hanging out with great people, your proclivity to be at risk goes down quite a bit. So just hang out with good people. You're going to make mistakes. That's okay. But surround yourself with good people and don't get caught up with what other people are doing. And if you want to, just a quick takeaway, where to start and where to end with temperance, it's with the tongue. You'll never have to explain something that you didn't say. With that, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to take them.
Well, you're, you're definitely going to get a lot of no's. It's a great question. You can't be scared of, of no. But don't think that just because they're helping you, that they're not getting anything out of you. That there's definitely a personal interest in helping. A lot of these people you're going to be reaching out to have someone help them along the way. And they don't have a way to repay that. So they're going to look for people who are authentic that they can share that, that knowledge with and their expertise. But you have to be authentic about it. So you can't go in to a meeting or, or try to set it up and say, hey, I really want to work in construction. Do you have any jobs with them? Because that's going to turn those people off immediately. Ask them how they got there. Ask them what skill set they have. And, and just be genuine in finding out how they got there, and you'll get the advice. So don't think that they're not getting anything out of it. And you got to be persistent. You're going to get a lot of no's, and if they say no, they'll never remember you. It's okay. So, what is the best book you've read? What? Best book that I've read. Probably, uh, this is going to sound like a cheap answer, but I would say the Bible. <laughs> Uh, at, at a certain time, 
you may find people that are just not receptive, and that's okay. Move on. There's a lot of career experts. You will find somebody that can help. But don't be scared to send, you know, three or four voicemails or a handwritten note on two emails over a, a three-week period. As long as you're respectful and genuine, it'll be fine. I mean, and here's an example I like to, to use. Um, do you know what you had for lunch last Tuesday? You don't? Well, that was about half an hour, maybe an hour of your life that you completely forgot. Do you think this expert's going to remember that 10-minute voice call you left two weeks ago? No chance. They're busy. So just be persistent and just keep trying. Be respectful. I'm going to tell you to uh, you know, buzz off and stop and go to somebody else. Um, what do you think about the difference movement and like if they were like over like going too far in the direction of like towards over to the It's a good question and something that I, I was doing a lot of research on, uh, but I believe in individual freedom. And we all have the opportunities to make choices. And if you make those choices correctly, you're going to do better. So if you can master temperance, you're going to do better in life, and that's just how it is. We don't need the government telling us what we can and can't do because there's natural incentives. And this goes back to that legal versus legitimate. There's a lot of things that are legal to do. You can spend as much money as you want buying whatever. It's completely legal, but if you do that, you're not going to have any money left. You know, if you buy all the beer in the world and drink it all, it's legal, but you're not going to do very well in life. So, I don't like the temperance movements. You guys are in control of your destiny, and that's why you have master temperance. How long did it take you to get from where you are now? Well, uh, where I am now is it's hard to define, but it's a, uh, you know, just keeps going up. You need a lot of great people to help you along the way. Uh, you know, I only graduated high school 10 years ago. Uh, so it's, it's been 10 years of connecting with great people, working hard, and now getting to the NFL level and having a lot of, a lot of fun and getting to go to Denver on those games. What was the time in your life in which you like, really had to restrain yourself in your temperance? I would say uh, maybe a time that I had to restrain myself a little bit is I, I made a quick decision to go to college. And I wanted to go to a party school, have some fun, go to California, um, beach town, and really enjoy it. And I, I registered for a university in Northern California. And I got out there, and I could immediately realize that that culture was not going to be good for me. Uh, I could tell the people I was going to surround myself weren't people that cared about me, weren't people that were going to lift me up. The education was definitely not a focus. It was just hang out. And I had already registered for classes, and I, I thought I was ready to go. I thought I was committed to this decision, and I was going to have to make the best of it. And I had a, a conversation with my dad. I said, you know, I'm just nervous. This doesn't seem like a good idea. And what we, uh, what we decided to do is actually took a year off between high school and college and just took some time to uh, travel a little bit and, and work a, a minimum wage job and, and recollect myself. And then I made a better decision and went to Hillsdale College. And it was fantastic. But there's going to be times where you make a decision and you think, oh man, that, this, this wasn't good. And I could be in trouble here. And it's going to be really difficult for me. And that was, that was a tough time. But I, I think by being thoughtful about it, asking you know, my dad for some help and some other people, I was able to make the right decision that did delay my college. I graduated a year later than all the people I graduated high school with. But it was the right move. So again, if you guys get in a situation where you're worried about temperance, or worried about what might happen to the people you're surrounding with, yourself with, it's never too late to remove yourself from that situation 
take some time, reevaluate, make a good decision. Oh, oh okay. time for one more. Um, so sometimes in my own mind, um, reality is that, that temptations arise and I want to do things that aren't good for me or, or maybe things that are good for me, but you need to do that in moderation. Right? What are some and I find that it's a lot easier to direct my attention to things that I can do as opposed to focusing on all the things that I can't do, if that makes sense. It's a lot easier to look at what we can do versus what we can't and say saying yes to things instead of no to things. And so what are some of the good things and the good habits that you um, instill into yourself to keep yourself living a temperate, moderate life? A good question. I think we all uh, struggle with that and do the same thing. Um, but temperance is something that you can practice um, it doesn't say that you can't have any pleasure or that you can't have any fun. And I think a lot of times we focus, like you said, on the things we can't do. We can't do this. We can't do this. That's fun. Everyone else is doing it. If you surround yourself with good people and are, are worried about your long-term goals, you're going you're gonna to reprioritize. And you're going to realize that the things you can't do aren't the things you, you can't do because they're, they're bad, but they're not going to lead you to your own. So when you start to reprioritize that, you're going to notice a lack of desire to do those things that are destructive to you. But you've got to, you've got to have that mindset of remembering what you're, you're trying to go for. And it's a lot easier to do that if you're with like-minded people that also want to get better. If you're just hanging out with people that are worried about the stuff they can't do, and maybe we can do a little bit of this and still be okay, then it can be a slow Does that make sense? Thank you, Mr. Melford. Uh, as a public art organization, we'd like to present you with the LCHS Challenge Point for coming and speaking today. Wow. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. But, Mr. Melford, we're here just a minute. That's all the time we have for today. If you have more questions, feel free to stick around. Um, yeah. Have a great night.